Here are the six steps for when you're triggered and the reason you haven't been successful stopping triggered emotions in the past. So let's talk about it. So you've been triggered, your partner says or does something and and you just react. And when you're triggered, it starts below your conscious level of thinking. You You don't think, you just do. When you're triggered, you really lose your ability to think something through, to problem solve, or really make a thoughtful decision. And this leads to falling into the same negative patterns and arguments over and over again. You've been there, you know. So when you're being triggered, your brain is literally hijacked. The most the most important thing for you to get today is that the problem with most tools that you get suggested to you for what to do when you're triggered The problem is that they don't take this part into account. You can't think of all the great things you should be doing because that smart, rational part of your brain is literally shut off and not working. I go deep into your brain on triggers and effective tools in episode 280 of my Relationships Made Easy podcast, how to effectively deal with triggers in your relationships. So if triggers are a problem, I really highly suggest you go there. But I did this, and this is totally different what I'm presenting today than everything that's over there. So if you're if triggers are a thing for you, please go listen or watch or however you're, you know, doing this. But this is a quick down and dirty way to deal with your, with your triggers, understanding that your brain is hijacked and you have to take care of that first. So the key to managing triggers, again, is that you first need to unhijack your brain and then you can use your tools because the rational thinking part of your brain can turn on. So here are the six easy steps to take when you're triggered. Do these steps in order. You have to do them in order. It's key because the first three are all about turning on what's called your parasympathetic nervous system, which calms your brain enough to be able to do steps four through six. So the order is super important. We have to unhijack first, and then you can use that more rational part of your brain to do the thinking part. Okay. All right. So step one is you got to stop. That Yeah, the moment you realize you've been triggered, you need to stop and do your best not to react. You want to be still and in your body as much as possible. This is the hardest part and why I talk about mindfulness so much on my podcast, Relationships with EC. I have so many tips and tools. There's We're going to link to some of the videos at the end of this and some of the resources so you can get deep because nothing's going to work if you're not mindful. I don't care what anyone tells you. You have to at least be able to stop somehow when you feel that feeling coming on. Step two, I want you to do what's called the shoulder shrug. It's very simple. I'm going to do it right now. And basically, and I'll link to a video where I talk about it more. Uh, Basically, it's raising your shoulders all the way, scrunching, scrunching up towards your ears, and then pretty much just relaxing them. Uh, We, when we get stressed, we bring our shoulders up up. And every time you do that, your brain thinks you're going to fight because that's the sort of positioning you have when you're going to fight someone. Everything comes up, you breathe out of your chest, not good. So do the shoulder shrug way up to yours and then let go and completely relax your shoulders. Make sure they're nice and low. You can also make sure you relax your jaw and your tongue. Your tongue is usually on the roof of your mouth or pressing against your teeth when you're feeling anxious or triggered. So having that moment, I just I just widen my jaw and just relax it and then go back and sort of notice where my tongue is and then put it in a relaxed position in my mouth. Step three, again, we're still on on hijacking the brain, is to breathe. You want to notice your breathing and make sure you're breathing out of your belly, which is the correct way to breathe. You know, most people don't even know that they're breathing incorrectly. You're not supposed to breathe out of your chest. When you take a deep, you know, that (gasps) and your chest comes up, notice the shoulders come up. And again, you're doing bad things to your brain. So you want to take one deep breath in through your nose and release it as slowly as you can through your mouth. My biggest trick for this is to keep one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And as you breathe in, your hand on your chest should never move, breathing in or out. The only hand that should move is the one on your belly. I know, try it right now, you'll see. And so 
as you breathe in, your stomach expands. And as you exhale slowly, slowly, that's the key, your stomach will contract. Okay. And again, this hand should not move. Now you're ready for step four. And now we've calmed the nervous system a little bit. We've hopefully got that vagus nerve turned on and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now our brain can actually think and be in the moment. And again, that all took what? Not even a minute, if you think about it. So you really can do this in a quick way in a conversation. Again, but you got to be mindful first. So step four is, do you want to name the fear? Are you anxious, angry, scared, overwhelmed, numb, withdrawing? See the feeling as best you can like a cloud moving past you. And I... I want you to practice saying, you know, oh, oh, wow, I am experiencing a lot of anxiety right now. Ooh, I am just full of fear right this minute. Don't say I'm anxious or I'm fearful or I'm overwhelmed. You want to separate it from yourself. This is called self-distancing. It's a psychological technique and the research shows it works because your anxiety really isn't you. It's 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 lying to you. It's telling you things that aren't true. It's almost like an alien, it's, right? That's, that's how it feels. It's taken you over. So it's not you. You want to you wanna go there. Now, step five, you want to name what's under the fear. So now you've named the fear. Now you have to get a little, a little deeper down. What does this situation remind you of? of? <laughs> if you use the words always or never, uh, what were the other times you experienced this before this cur- current situation? You know, we say, oh, this always happens to me. He never listens or something like that. And we get triggered. Uh, people always ignore me. They, you know, th- this kind of language. It's like, what is this reminding you of? And here's the key. What thoughts are you having that are driving this fear? You, f- you feel the way you think. And the only way to change a feeling is to change you know, change your thinking about it once you get past the unhijacking of the brain. Okay. That's the only way to shift that. So what is, what are the thoughts that I'm having right now? People are going to take advantage of me if I'm not careful. Um, No one loves me. Uh, I'm only as good as what I do. I don't know what you're thinking, but that's what's driving the fear. You got to identify it. And step six, the last step is to get perspective. Try not to judge what's going on and try to bring perspective to the situation. And my favorite question here is, what else could be true? What else could be true about this situation, about this dialogue, about this conversation? And so it could be true that your partner is not saying they don't love you. It could be true that they're having a hard day, that they don't realize something's hurting you. It could be true that your boss's mother just died. You don't know. You don't know. You, you think you do. Your anxiety lies to you and says it does, but it doesn't. And I always say to ask yourself, do I want to be correct or effective? Because you can't be both. So you could be, you know, correct in your head all day long that nobody loves you and nobody ever listens, but is it effective to think that way? Is it helpful? Is it helping you to get what you want and need? No, it's putting you in a victim mindset. So don't be afraid of your emotions. Work with them and try to see them objectively. That's really the point. And there you have it. Those are steps one through six. We'll have lots of great things linked here at the end that you can access and uh, to get deeper on this. But uh, this should help you get started. I'm Dr. Abby Metcalf. Please uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel. I have videos out every week. This is like a bonus one. And uh, I'm here to help. I love you. If no one tells you, have a great day.